MS, aging, and menopause. Check, check, and check. I've done all three. I'm filming this in 2024, and I am 57 years old. MS, aging, and menopause all have challenges. And when we add them all together, girl, it can be hard. And today, we're going to look at the connections, some of what the research shows, and end with some tips on how to help manage them all. Sound good? Let's start with the symptoms. We're going to play a little game today. I'll show you a symptom, and you guess if it's related to MS, aging, or menopause. Grab a piece of paper and jot down your answers. Ready? Here we go. In alphabetical order, balance problems, bladder problems, cognitive impairments, depression, fatigue, mood swings, muscle weakness, sleep problems, and vision changes. All set? Got your answers? Okay, this was a game of trick questions. All of these can be symptoms of MS aging and menopause. Dang. So how do we know which is the cause of our symptoms? The short answer is we can't be 100% sure. We need to keep track of our symptoms and work closely with our doctors so they can help us manage these symptoms. We can also make diet and lifestyle changes that may help as well. More about that later. I will share from my own experience that I can't distinguish which is which either. I also had long COVID, so there's that too. Let's talk a bit about menopause and perimenopause. Menopause is when our ovaries stop producing eggs and the hormones estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone start to fall. The definition of menopause is when a woman has not had a period for 12 months. This typically happens in our early 50s. But perimenopause can begin in our 40s and last up to 10 years. Perimenopause is the time before menopause where we may experience symptoms of menopause, but we're still getting our periods. As we enter perimenopause, our hormones are shifting and fluctuating, but that's not the only time when our hormones are shifting and possibly affecting our MS. From 1998, the Pregnancy and Multiple Sclerosis Study, which prospectively addressed 254 women with MS during pregnancy and reported a 70% reduction in the annualized relapse rate in the third trimester compared to the rate in the year before pregnancy. How cool is that? During the third trimester, our estrogen levels are very high. This is to protect the fetus. This same study went on to say, furthermore, in MS patients, estradiol regulates immune responses by regulating the expression and release of inflammatory and anti-inflammatory cytokines leading to regulatory immune response. These data suggest a potential role of estrogen in MS, although few clinical trials have been completed so far. Estradiol is one of the estrogen hormones that's important to the way our immune systems behave and in inflammation. MS is an inflammatory disease, so if we can manage inflammation better, that would seem to help. The authors of the study also asked women about their MS symptoms. A retrospective questionnaire-based study on menopausal and premenopausal women with MS showed that 82% of menopausal women reported that the severity of their symptoms worsened during the premenstrual period. Among postmenopausal women, 54% reported worsening symptoms after menopause, and 75% of postmenopausal women who tried hormone replacement therapy reported disease improvement. Hmm, those are some pretty high percentages. So it would seem that our hormone levels affect our symptoms. We do need to keep in mind that this was a retrospective questionnaire, so it's relying on the memory of the levels of symptoms, so there could be some error. The study concluded estrogens regulate immune cell response and exert anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective effects in MS. Because the differences in immune cell pattern are maximized during pregnancy, the pregnant condition represents a model for investigating the immunological changes that determine protection from disease activity. This is very, very cool. There are current ongoing studies about how estrogens may be used to help protect us from disease activity. 
or used in combination with other disease-modifying treatments to help those of us with high disease activity. In another study that I read about the impact of menopause on MS from 2023, they state, menopause is identified by some authors as associated with an increase in the accumulation rate of disability, suggesting that it's a turning point to a more progressive phase of MS. This is believed to be attributed to the worsening of neurodegenerative processes rather than the inflammatory activity of MS. So this study is suggesting that our disease activity later in life may have less to do with inflammation and more to do with aging and neurodegeneration. This may be a clue to smoldering MS or PIRA, progression independent of relapse activity. I did another video on that and I'll link it above and put it in the description below if you'd like to check it out after this one. The study went on to say, they found that the postmenopausal state was associated with a worsening of patient-reported severity scores on seven functional areas based on the MS rating scale, even those not typically overlapping with menopausal symptoms. Among the most increased symptoms in postmenopause was fatigue, affective disorders, anxiety and depression, urologic, bladder irritability and, and incontinence, and sexual symptoms. So it looks like it's not just inflammation, but also the neurodegeneration that comes along with aging that may be contributing to more MS symptoms and disability. They went on to talk about how hot flashes can affect our fatigue levels as well, saying, therefore, this symptom can be amplified by vasomotor menopausal symptoms, triggering UTOF's phenomenon and often coexisting with other symptoms. UTOF's phenomenon is when our symptoms flare due to heat. It can be environmental heat like summertime temperatures or internal heat like when we heat up when we exercise or when we have a hot flash. With menopause, women may report changes in attention, memory, and cognitive performance. Symptoms already frequent in people who age with MS. Thus, menopausal and MS symptoms, as well as their overlapping effects, may impact the quality of life of patients. You think? They went on to conclude that growing evidence indicates a worsening of disability and neurodegenerative aspects in postmenopausal MS women, although both phenomena are worsened by aging. So older women in general have more disability and neurodegeneration, but it seems like us lucky ladies with MS may have even more. So what's a girl to do? I can't give medical advice, but I encourage you to talk with both your neurologist and your gynecologist about possible hormone replacement therapy and the risks and benefits of it. Some of the risks of hormone replacement therapy could be an increased risk of breast cancer, blood clots, and strokes, but in more recent years, they found the risks are very low and the benefits may outweigh the risks. The benefits include reducing symptoms of menopause like hot flashes, sleep problems, anxiety, and low mood, and reduce the risk for osteoporosis. There are definitely things that we can do with our diets and lifestyle as well. With our diets, eating more fruits and vegetables are related to fewer menopausal symptoms. And foods with phytoestrogens may help with postmenopausal health as well. There was some concern that phytoestrogens may not be helpful and may cause issues, but the most recent research shows that's not the case. In fact, they found a reduction in vasomotor symptoms, hot flashes, of menopause, and it appears to improve bone mineral density and markers of cardiovascular risk. Some foods that are high in phytoestrogens are soybeans, chickpeas, peanuts, flax seeds, barley, grapes, berries, plums, and green and black tea. There was also a study done by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine that reported up to an 84% reduction in hot flashes with a plant-based diet that was rich in soy. I actually tested this one on myself. After reading the study, I added a half a cup of soybeans that I cooked in my Instant Pot to my lunchtime salads each day, and my hot flashes reduced a lot. I would say they went down by about 70%, and I definitely slept better. If you wanna try it for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below to the soybeans that I used. They're organic and very inexpensive. Exercise can also help with MS and menopause symptom management. 
Regular exercise can help alleviate menopause symptoms such as poor sleep, anxiety, low mood, and fatigue. Remember all those symptoms I listed at the beginning of the video? Exercise can help with a lot of them too, and it has the added benefit of reducing our risk for weight gain and comorbid conditions like cancer, heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and osteoporosis. Aerobic exercise can help reduce the risk for heart disease, help us manage our weight, and help us with our mood by releasing endorphins. Weight-bearing exercise can help with bone health and preventing osteoporosis. Strength training can help to add muscle mass and reduce anxiety. And flexibility training can help improve our coordination and reduce the risk for arthritis. Stress management can also help. When we're stressed after menopause, our adrenal glands can be activated too much and our levels of estrogen can decline even further. Adding mindfulness practices or working with a therapist can help us to manage stress. Menopause and aging are going to happen. We can't stop them. But we can work with our doctors and work on our diets and lifestyle to help manage the symptoms and possibly reduce the effects on our MS. As always, I'll link all the papers and studies I referenced today in the description below. To see more on smoldering MS and hormones, watch these videos next. Don't forget to like and subscribe and subscribe to my newsletter using the link below. Until next time, be well.